because the purpose of the requirements of consultation and collaboration is for the smooth functioning of governance in the state and to ensure that the provisions of the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir are not inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution of India. Third, since the effect of applying all the provisions of the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, since the effect of applying all the provisions of the constitution to Jammu and Kashmir to the exercise of the power under Article 371D is the same as issuing a notification under Article 370 Clause 3, which the President has the power to unilaterally issue the principle of consultation and collaboration and not required to be followed. Fourth, the exercise of power is malafide only if power was exercised with an intent to deceive. Deception can only be proved if the power which is otherwise unavailable to the authority or body is exercised or if the power that is available is improperly exercised. Since the concurrence of the state government was not required for the exercise of power under Article 370, bracket 1, bracket D, to apply all provisions of the constitution to the state, the president securing the concurrence of the Union of India on behalf of the state government is not malafide. The next issue is the challenge to, Art to CO 272 on the ground that it is ultra vires Article 370, 1D, because it modifies Article 370. We have held that the modification by CO 272 to Article 367 as it applies to Jammu and Kashmir had the effect of amending Article 370 and is thus ultra vires Article 370 bracket 1D. We have reached this conclusion for the following reasons. First, recourse must be had to the procedure contemplated by Article 370 clause 3 if Article 370 is to cease to operate or is to be amended or modified in its application to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, no other procedure may be utilized to amend Article 370. Second, the rule of interpretation that a power under a statute must be exercised in accordance with the provisions of that statute and in no other manner is undoubtedly applicable to the Constitution. Third, from precedent, including Shankari Prasad Singh, Sajjan Singh, Kihoto Holohan and Rajendra Shah, it emerges that the following aspects are of significance when assessing whether a change has been made to a provision of the constitution. One, a change may be either in terms of or in its effect. Two, a change can be said to have been made even if the language of the concerned provision is not directly amended by adding, subtracting or modifying the language. This is a change in effect. And three, if the effect of an amendment is to change a provision, such effect must be significant or appreciable. And four, the substance of a change is more important than its form. Second, an assessment of whether a constitutional order amounts to a modification and consequently whether the procedure under Article